Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. It's noon time. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Edward. Hi, good to see you. Beautiful day. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, yeah, we have, uh, you know, for those of us who are in California, are experiencing all the smoke and the fire. So we can also talk or ask questions about that. Uh, but uh, uh, today's topic is going to be, I mean, what I'm going to talk about is about gut health. And this in Chinese medicine, we are, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of wisdom about, about diet and, di and gut health. And uh, this is the season that we put our energy into, into um, digesting the food. So in, uh, there's a, every season, there's different organs that is more active. Uh, in that season, and uh, we're shifting from the heart. Yeah, the summer is summer love. The heart energy is very active in the summer, and then we are uh, the the end of the summer is a time for harvest, harvesting all the food that we grew. We started as a seed in the winter, grew up in, as a sprout in the spring, and full bloom in the in the summer, and then uh, the late summer is a time for us to harvest that. Um, uh, whatever we we harvested and and eat it. So the late summer is devoted for uh, the earth. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We can talk also about what's going on in California because I know a lot of us are here in California and having issues with with smoke. Um, that that's very hard because you know uh, we have this COVID things going on. <laughs> And we all say stay at home, and we we went and hiked and tried to get out to, to uh, to go out and out of the home if we cannot travel by airplane or go to concerts and things like that. People, or to the gym, people use the outdoors as a as a way to uh, get exercise. And now it's full of smoke. You know, we cannot. <laughs> we really need to stay home <laughs> with our with our HEPA filter and all that stuff. So uh, we can we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, but let's start with uh, with just kind of just connecting with our body with kind of a, a, just a little bit of a meditation, if you will, or energy practice before we start. Uh, let's just close your eyes. And take a deep breath, few deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Just a time to pause. When we close the eyes, the energy goes inwardly. When we take few deep breaths, slow, mindful breaths, when we inhale, when we take a really deep inhalation, we are accepting this current moment as it is. No, not how we like it to be, but as it is. We're breathing in the present moment. And we're breathing in the present moment, we are not in a stress response because the stress response is about being in resistance to the current moment, whatever it is going on. Stress build up, is building up from a place of tension, from resisting what's happening at this moment. And when we are relaxing muscular tension, we're deciding to breathe deeply. Exhale from the mouth. There's an acceptance. The brain goes into a different response, not the fight or flight and resist, but as acceptance. Here, when we take air in, we're accepting this, the energy. So let's take a few more deep breaths and see if you can put your hands on the lower abdomen and feel that area open. Yeah, lower abdomen, digestive system. We're talking about digestive system. The hands are the expansiveness, the, the extension of the heart meridian, the lung meridian. And when you put your hands on 
the belly, you're sending loving energy into your digestive system. Let the breath go all the way down there. See if you can soften lines of tension in the digestive system. See if your mind can travel into different areas in, within this cavity. And it, with each inhalation, see if you can send loving energy, just to have the intention of care and compassion to your body. Your body is an amazing machine, amazing machine, amazing garden, amazing landscape. And if we just show it a little love and compassion and care, it's just amazing what it can do for us. Just excited to do its work even more robust. Right, so let's move one hand, one hand and put it on the, on the base of the brain. Yeah, just behind your head. Yeah, you just put it behind where the base of the skull is. Just have a support here, feeling like you're being supported, like a big hand of a, a big mother holds you from the base. You know how you lift a baby, you hold his head. Just think about you as, your, as a baby and hold yourself Feeling that this hand that supports your head is the hand of a loving mother. And you can even breathe in it even deeper into the lower abdomen. Nice. And let's relax, bring both hands, open them to the sides and open the hand. Oh, this is so nice, right? <laughs> so nourishing what we can do in like just a few, like just a couple of minutes, if we can take two minutes of the day and, and, uh, and do a little self-care practice. So there's a very important uh, connection between the brain and the gut. Yeah, there's many books now written about the brain-gut connection. And in Chinese medicine, we say that uh, we have two brains. You know, in Western medicine, now they're talking about the second brain, which is the digestive system. But really, in Chinese medicine, we said this is the first brain. It has more, more neuron and more, uh, more energy than the, 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 the brain itself. So the, there's many uh, traditions, uh, not only Chinese, but uh, aboriginals an African that worked with the belly as a center of, of feeling. And even, you know, the Aboriginal, there's a, there's a, uh, they were able to uh, focus on the belly and feel where their relatives are located in the desert, like where they are, they could sense, they could actually f see, you know, now we're talking about the third eye as a way to see kind of open the clairvoyant vision and to see beyond the ability of the real vision. But, you know, the Aboriginal use the belly and the Chinese medicine talk about the, the, the wisdom of the, of the belly. And we also talk about gut feeling, right? If you want to make a big decision, like buying a house or doing, it's like, what is your gut feeling? Like beyond the rational brain, what, what do you feel about it? And this is the felt sense that we feel from the belly. And uh, so in, uh, in many traditions, not only ancient Chinese, shamanic practices, and again, African, there's tribes in Africa that used to heal the whole body, any ailments from, uh, from the belly. Uh, yeah, they had this dance that moved the belly. <laughs> Very interesting stuff. So I just had, had a little research on it. I was just curious about that. So, and uh, Chinese medicine put a lot of attention in, in the belly. And we said that every ailment starts from the belly. Even a cold in Chinese medicine, it starts from the belly. So you digest the virus and it's in, first in the belly. 
and then it, it, it goes and creates havoc in the body. But if first, it's, it's the belly, the, the digestive system is very, very important. Uh, so, uh, so that's first thing. So I'm just gonna kind of talk a little bit about some principles just to kind of educate and also open it for Q and A, if, if you like. So digestive system, you know, we are doing this uh, three workshop series. Uh, we are almost uh, got to the third uh, work, workshop series, um, which is all geared toward immune system. And the first was sleep. Sleep is very, very important for uh, immune system. Second was, was lung health and immune system. Lung, the breath, is the first, is the first step to heal your body, to prevent illness. And the breath is also connecting to the digestive system. The connection between the lung and the spleen energy in Chinese medicine is very, very important. And in immune system, uh, the, the digestive system is where the Wei Qi is being created. So the Wei Qi is kind of like this, there's many, many different Qi. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, almost 400 types of energy in Chinese medicine. One of them is called Wei Qi. And Wei Qi is a, is a defense system, the, the, the defense system of your body. It's called guardian Qi. And uh, it's being created and generated in the digestive system. So if you eat poorly, there's less Wei Qi being created. Now the lung is uh, responsible distributing the Wei Qi. So it's being created by the digestive system and distributed by the lungs. So the breath would be very important like we worked on the previous workshop. And then the coming, the coming workshop in September would be uh, about emotional resilience and emotions are very, very important. And there's a strong connection with the, our emotional energy and our, and our diet and our digestive system and in the brain. So I'll just put it all in, uh, so I'm throwing a lot of things in there, but I'll, I'll show you how it's all come together. In a short, <laughs> in a short, in, in in our short half hour or less than half hour, because I want to give you some Q and A too. Um, uh, so, so basically, you know the way cheese. So the digestive system is very. So what we eat is very very important. And uh, so and there's many many diets now. People go. They, there was Atkin diets and keto diet, and people go on all these different diets and doing cleanses and things like that. And I just wanted to say what, what in Chinese medicine we say about all these things and what really the way to go. And, um, you know, we, in, in Chinese medicine is more about balance and uh, there's no, uh, we're not really believing in cutting like carbs or cutting this from the diet. You know, everything, uh, everything it should be eaten in balance and, and, and clear good food is very, very important. Uh, to your digestive system, in terms of um, in terms of plant based or meat, you know, in Chinese medicine, again, this is very ancient medicine. So uh, we have a lot of trends right now, and people go vegan or not vegan, and and people be becoming very emotional and very attached to the diet they they do. Uh, and I just want to throw the idea of Chinese medicine in diet. Uh, everything should be in balance in terms of meat or, or plant-based. Uh, in Chinese medicine, we talk about mostly plant-based diet, where the meat is more or less like a spice. So if you eat meat, is, is, uh, it's 10% of your diet. So if you look at your plate, you have 10% that is, is, uh, is, is meat. So I just wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit because I know that there's, this is kind of a hot topic. Uh, of course, plant base is, is great. Uh, there's no, nothing wrong with it. There are some people that, uh, that do better with meat or not meat, and it's very up to a, up to a personal constitution. And uh, some, sometimes the pregnant woman needs to eat more meat or losing a lot of blood, or things like that. And this is really, uh, you know, it's, I don't want to say like a big stroke, uh, the big strokes that I'm going to say about diet are very general, but there's a lot of uh, personal constitution. It's very, very important to talk. If you have problems with digestive system, any problem, you should talk with the Chinese doctor. In terms of the, it's the, the we talk about the energy of the food. 
the energy of the food and not so much about the carbs, protein, sugars, things like that. We talk more about the, the food as energy and all each food is being, uh, being categorized as, as uh, in terms of the, uh, is it hot, is it cold, is it damp or is it dry? So if you are suffering from, let's say sluggish, bloating, soft stool, you have more dampness. And this is very common in people to have dampness. And then, so you have to drain the dampness. So if you eat, you know, people love to eat like good people, people trying to be healthy and they eat a lot of broccoli for say, or kale, right? And broccoli is very cold in Chinese medicine. So if you have, uh, if you eat a lot of broccoli, you're actually adding dampness to your already sluggish stomach. So it's, uh, so that's why when you go to a Chinese restaurant, uh, the broccoli is being cooked with ginger and chili because that's hot and you blend it with the cold and it becomes neutral. So it's not too cold for you. So, and that brings us to the whole idea of cooked food uh, versus raw food. So when you cook food, it becomes neutral. It's not in terms of yin and yang. And, uh, and, you know, in Chinese medicine, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's, uh, as a lot says about, about eating uh, cooked food and not a lot of raw food. Uh, again, this is very personal. If you eat a lot of raw food and your digestive system is strong and good, that's excellent. If you're having a lot of issues with digestive system, a lot of bloating, uh, you know, it's very important to eat cooked food because raw food is, is just, uh, you know, this, what we call the digestive fire. The digestive fire created when, when you, when you were born, they cut the umbilical cord. So you used to get all the nutrition from the umbilical cord. And this is why babies breathe like that. They breathe from the belly because they used to suck the energy from the umbilical cord. So if you see a baby born, it breathes, it does that belly breathing. It's very nice breathing. And then we grow up and the breath go up and up and onto the chest like, and this is not good breathing. We, in Taoist, we say breathe into the belly. It's very good for digestive system. Yeah, so we have all these practices in Qigong that really support digestive system that we're gonna focus in my classes from now on. So uh, just for the period of, of, of this, uh, the period of time for digestive system, we're gonna focus on what, what practice, what Qigong practice would be good for digestive system. Yeah, so breathing into the belly. But the, again, going back to the umbilical cord, we got to nutrition from the umbilical cord. And when, when it was cut, there's a, a kind of like a trauma center there. And then you start to eating from the mouth. But this created the, that trauma of cutting the umbilical cord, creating the digestive fire. The fire, the heat, there's a burner here. There's a burner underneath the belly. So the heat in the lower abdomen, that's why we do a lot of, lower abdomen meditation is very good for kind of building up the fire. And a lot of time in the end of the meditation, we focus on seeing fire there or seeing a sun. I say, visualize the sun, visualize, because this is your power. This is the battery and this is the burner. And, uh, and this is very, very healing. Yes, yeah, so if you wanna, if you eat a lot of raw food or cold water, it basically kills the, the fire in the digestive system. Uh, so that's why we say don't eat a lot of raw food. Um, but again, it, it is pers person specific. A lot of people eat salad, eating raw food, and they're doing very, very well. Again, if, if digestive system is an issue, cooked food is very important. It's bringing the, the, the food into a neutral state. It's not yin or yang, so you, you, it's a neutral cell. It's very easily digested. So it's almost like you cooked it. So the stomach, your digestive fire doesn't have to cook it much more. So you're not, you don't have to cook it a lot. Uh, does that make sense? I think so. So, uh, so cooked food is very good. It's very neutral to the body. Um, eating, uh, eating mostly plant-based is very good. Eating... Uh, uh, not a lot of carbs or a lot of protein or a lot, just a very balanced diet. So it's really going 
into uh, into this idea of, of balance, um, eating balanced diet. Yeah, uh, there where we don't believe in Chinese medicine in 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 extreme uh, diets like the keto or this. They cro- they cause all kinds of problems in the body. There's a there's a reason why we have all these food. If you look at ancient tr- uh, ancient cultures, uh, you know we people ate everything that grows, <laughs> and food is very healing. We're seeing full food in Chinese medicine as me- as medicine, and there's a whole herbology, you know. And again, it's it's being um, it's being done. It's being uh, uh, you know if if a person has a problem like acid reflex or constipation then there's some, it says too much dryness, you know, and too much dryness, you have to introduce cooling food like seaweed. Yeah, like, like salmon, like things that are cooling and not hot. You can actually feel it. If you eat spicy food, you feel hot. So actually that you feel hot and you feel dry. Sometimes you feel, you feel it with foods that you eat. So it's, um, so listening to self is very good. But there's a lot of uh, Qigong practices that would help digestive system as well. So, and then we have all this, all this issue about emotional eating, how, how we see and, and the brain gut connection, what this is all about. And uh, just to say a few words before I, I kind of close about the brain gut connection, it's very, very strong um, energy between the brain and the gut. And uh, when you are thinking too much, people that are over, overly thinking, they have a problem with digestive system. A lot of students that learn a lot, they have a problem with digestive system. So too much thinking and worry, emotional distress would, you know, sometimes people that have trauma, they cannot eat. Or people that are depressed, they cannot eat. They cannot digest food. Yeah, because the depression is sinking down the lung. So there's not enough, you don't breathe as well. And what breath? Breath is oxygen to the fire. So think about the, the fire and the digestive system, the digestive fire, and deep breathing into the lower abdomen would fan the fire. Kind of like what happens now in the, <laughs> the, the, the wind is fanning the fires when we have all this fire in California. So we, we, Deep breathing to love, it would fan the fire, would actually bring more fire. So, uh, so, so stress always would sink the lung chi. Excuse me, always would sink the lung chi. Worry specifically is being in too much in the head. Too, so th- there's a very strong connection between the hand and the gut, the head and the gut. And so just think about you going out for lunch, you're getting lunch, you come back and you want to do some work. Can you think clearly after, after eating a lot? We can't, right? You can't clear, think clearly. So we say it's either thinking or either eating. If you're eating, so, if you, so it's, it's very important like when you eat, to eat in a calm state and just focus on, on the food, tasting the food, enjoying the food, smiling, having a good, com- you can have a good conversation with your friend or really have a mindful, like taste the food. Make, we say make love with the food. Very, very important. And uh, chew it very well and digest it and don't engage in, in uh, yeah, like if you're angry or tense, you said you, you actually, that would not digest very good. And we know now that in, in stress, uh, emotional distress, you're not absorbing the nutrient out of the food. We know that the pancreas doesn't release a lot of enzymes like when you're relaxed and, um, and, the, and the small intestine doesn't, doesn't uh, absorb the nutrient. So you, want to, uh, so you want to bring yourself, you want to do some breathing, you want to relax, you want to change your mindset and then eat and focus on the food. So that's very, very important in Chinese medicine, the relationship between the brain, the emotions, and the digestive system. Uh, just think about a time when you ate, you know, with a good friend and had a good conversation and it was very relaxed. You feel like that you digest much better. I don't know if you noticed, but 
And if you're stressed and all that, that you always feel the food kind of in your stomach. So I don't know if you have a personal experience with it, but, uh, uh, you know, and then we have this whole idea of emotional eating too. Like uh, we all, we take ice cream or chocolate. We want to compensate ourselves for something. And uh, how do we bring ourselves into eating whole foods, uh, good nutrients, um, I might do, we might do another workshop on, uh, I did a really, really nice workshop with Beth Greer, uh, teamed up with her. That was really nice. She talked about how important it is to eat organic food. You know, now we have all this back in ancient China, we didn't have all that <laughs> toxicity from pesticide, from all this. this is a new stuff, like pesticide and what we, commercial food, you know, the energy that, you know, how do we grow the food? How do the food has been grown? You know, you, you, it's very hard to get food that has been grown with, with, with human hands, with a lot of love now with, with, I don't know if you grow your own garden or not, but, but we are kind of like eating uh, commercial food and, um, and also non-organic food. So it's, it's, that's also something that is very important. So the idea of gut health is very, very important. I just wanted to open your, you to kind of like the idea of it and, um, and kind of give some key points. Another, another one is to rub your stomach after you finish eating like this. Rubbing your stomach, there's actually, they, they actually, they did research. They show that the, the nerve, their nerve, endings in your hands uh, actually has a, a connection with the small and large intestine. So I actually, if you're rubbing the stomach, even though you think, oh, this is inside of me and this is outside of me, there's actually a, uh, there's actually a, a connection there. And uh, rubbing your stomach is very good. And I want you to try something. You, you rub, if you have a significant other or a friend, it's even better when somebody does it to you because their chi is different than your chi. And if somebody else rub your stomach, you'll feel it's actually going to work better because you, you supplement each other energy. So uh, this is your homework. <laughs> Get somebody else to rub your stomach and rub their stomach and just see how it feels. See how it feels on yourself and see how it so this is, uh, wow, that's, I talked a lot. <laughs> I guess I talked for almost half hour. Uh, let me just open it to, to any question or just sharing uh, any, anything that, that uh, you want to, to say or share. Marty, did you... I, I just wanted to share, this is so important at this time because we're, we're in different and somewhat stressful situations sometimes. And it is true, you need to eat healthy, good foods and, and nutritious foods for you. And don't eat in front of the TV set because sometimes that news can set your meal off to not a good start. <laughs> and I'm learning to do that. I'm learning to say, okay, we're going to eat now and the TV needs to go off for 10 minutes, whatever, because um, it's important. Yes. Yes. Like being what you're doing. Exactly. You're eating the stress from the news. You know, you're actually digesting in Chinese medicine. We said digesting emotion We digesting so what mindset we're eating, that's beautiful. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> good to hear you. I really love that you're joining regularly, Marty, by the way. It's good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Edward, go ahead. So uh, I want to recommend something that I found on Shark Tank a while uh -huh. ago. And you go can ahead. go to filter, filteryourlife.com and they're nasal filters. And I, you put it on your nose. So that and then I put on my N95 and I don't smell the smoke. Ooh, so that's you, great. you just put one on each nostril. So it's filteryourlife.com. Filter your life. Nasal filters. And again, with your N95, so you don't smell the smoke. And also, uh, my doctor friend, uh, Zach, he and I were working on carbon filters with a MERV of eight. 
to 12. So the carbon will take the smoke and the smell out of your air conditioning system, your heating system, if you just run your fan. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, with this heat and the smoke, my windows have been closed. So I put the air on and then getting the carbon. So going on to Amazon, you know, carbon filters, you'll get all the information. Mm -hmm. And you want a MERV of eight to 12, the higher, the better. Mm -hmm. And if you get a two inch thick filter versus the one inch, it's even better. Mm -hmm. So just some recommendations that I've been working with, with, uh, with friends. I see the carbon filters are part of the, 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 the filter it's, it, you buy it separately. Yeah. Because you have a filter. Hopefully everyone changes their filters a lot in their heating and air system. Mm -hmm. and, and this, by getting the carbon with a high MERV, mm. you're taking the smell, the smoke and the particles out of your house. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's for anybody in California. We are experiencing the smoke. You know, two years ago, just to connect with the same idea, two years ago, I did a, I did a lung workshop, kind of like the one we did before with uh, Whitney Bird. She was an acupuncturist that joined and she recommended there was big smoke and uh, what the smoke created in the lung is, is creating too much uh, dryness. And moistening the lungs is very, very important. She gave a recommendation that I shared on this workshop that we just did, recommendation for recipes to moisten the lungs and to uh, 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 balance the yin, yin yang part of the lungs because of all the smoke. So if you like to, it's part of this uh, workshop that is, is, is recorded and all the recipes are there. Um, you know, I ju I'm just gonna say, you know, astragalus root, cooking astragalus root with ginger, with pears, uh, with goji berries is very, very good for nourishing the, the lung chi. Uh, yeah, uh, ginger, goji berries, astragalus root would be very good. And honey, honey is very, very good for the lungs, very nourishing the lungs. It's, tastes good too. <laughs> so talking about diet and, and lung health, Anybody else wants to share something? Yeah, we're kind of like out of our... Okay, Susan. Hey, Susan. Welcome. Uh, okay, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Um, so I came in a little late, but you had mentioned that broccoli is a cool food. Yeah, cold. Uh-huh. Cold food. Okay. So, and, um, but cooking kind of neutralizes it. Does right. it neutralize the broccoli? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. It's neutralized the broccoli. Yeah. It's, uh, so cooking would be, would be very good for neutralizing cold, hot, yin and yang. So that's why we, in Chinese medicine, we say a cooked food is very good. It's also digesting the food a little bit more. And, I know I'm saying it and I know that there are a lot of people that I've worked with that heal themselves through raw food. And I just wanted to say it. It's not to say that you have to cook all your food. If you are good with, with raw food, if your digestive system is strong, there's, it's, it's fine too. I just want to make it as a disclaimer. In Chinese medicine, we, we put emphasis on cooked food because it neutralizes it and it, it, it eased the digestive system. You know, just think about when you're, when you're sick, what are you gonna eat? You're gonna eat soups, you're gonna eat stews, you're gonna eat warm soups, right? It, it's, even the temperature is gonna be warm, so you don't have to, so you wanna take, because this is the immune system, the Wei Qi is being generated in the, in the spleen. And when you're sick, you want to support your digest, you know, digestion is a very, very uh, taxing, action you know eating it's like taking food from nature and breaking it down to make it your own dna to make it part of you it's a very very cumbersome it's very uh it's energy consuming practice and chinese medicine is like we can ease it out by eating warm food cooked warm food to ease that you know when and there's a research of people showing that whenever the humans invented the fire and people started to cook food, the longevity uh, went up. 
And of course, back then in the days, they're eating, uh, you know, not clean food. So they probably got sick from eating uh, raw food that is not clean. And people, a lot of people died. But cooked food, you know, since the, when humans started to cook the food, we see that longevity just shot up. So, um, you know, there's something to be said about that. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> uh okay so maybe we have one more question because i kind of talked a lot if if you'd like or uh we can kind of finish it thank you edward for sharing about the smoke that's uh, i'm gonna look these things up too anybody uh, else wants to if share anybody wants to type in in the chat area and share some information that would be great because okay. as we're talking sometimes we're listening and not registering everything the chat yeah. is a great place to share. Okay, cool. And Marty, I, I just I just wrote it in for you, filteryourlife.com. Perfect. And it's nasal filters. And I will write down the book. It's called The Tao of Nutrition. If okay. you want to learn about cold food, hot food, and all the all the uh, uh, it's listing a lot of rest, there's a lot of recipes and for different ailments in this food, in this book. It's written by a very, uh, you know, a, a person that you can really trust is a, is a Chinese doctor for many, many years, very accomplished. It's called The Tao of Nutrition. It's a book. Uh, give it a try. Buy it out. Read a little bit. Just understand kind of like the concept of, uh, of what food does what, what food is cold, what food is hot, how to self-heal with, with food. It's, uh, it's a little bit more comprehensive done our little talk here. Yes, Edward. So from our sleep seminar, the first one of this three series, you've got me drinking so much water. I mean, I'm, before I get downstairs, I have 16 ounces of water. I get downstairs and I juice another six, uh, eight <laughs> ounces. Then I have my coffee another. So, and then all day long, I have two glasses sitting there and I'm constantly drinking another eight ounces of water. And that's really, I feel it's been great drinking mm -hmm. a lot of water. Awesome. We're supposed to, and now you got me in the ha habit, so. I always have water and I have tea. Good, Marty. <laughs> you know, yeah, because I, I feel really extra dry during this time. Yes. Like my mouth is drier, my, yeah, so. Beautiful. Drink water, drink, 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 drink. <laughs> yes, yes, during the smoke, that's, again, it's very important, it's dry, and drink water it's just, it goes back to the Chinese medicine principles of dry and wet. And uh, yeah, especially nowadays to wash the lungs down. Yeah. And hot water with honey, even just honey and it, the thickness of the honey that is really nourishing the lungs. Uh, thank you guys so much. It's I'm really loving this tea talks. Uh, let's just do uh, a, a short meditation just to close up. We kind of like over, over our time. But let's uh, put our hands on the belly again. Rub the belly. Feel the connection of your hand. Feel maybe the warmth of your hand on the, on the skin. Just feel the connection. Remember the homework today <laughs> or this week whenever you can to not only rub your belly after you eat, but just see how it feels to have another person rub your belly and you rub them. And how does it feel? And just put your mind inside of the belly, not on the surface, but in deeply inside. And smile to the digestive system. And you know, it's just sending love, good chi, good energy. Let the breath go down deep there. This is the rest and digest response. This is how you want to eat your food when you're relaxed, happy and content. And let's pause the movement of the circle and put the hand on the navel. Yeah, let's close with this breathing meditation. The space between the navel and the spine, it's called the Dantian, elixir field. And that's the fire, that fire we're talking about, 
It's just between, if you, if you paint a line between the navel and the spine, the opposite point on the spine behind the navel, that midpoint is where the, the fire is. That's where the fire is. Visualize a small, beautiful, loving bonfire. Feeling the heat and fanning the fire with your breath. Some of you will really feel the heat there as you focus your attention like laser sharp on this area. This is a, a beautiful meditation also to assist with sleeping, with sleep, because this is the energy, you put your mind there, you notice that the mind calmed down. Yeah, it's very calming. There's a sense of peace and power. Nice. Thank you guys so much. Beautiful. So nice to fill this area, right? It's just kind of juicy. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Have a great Tomorrow day. Night. <laughs> Tomorrow night, right? Right. Exactly. Tomorrow night. Uh, good night, Qigong. Yeah, make it, make it. Thank you, Edward. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>